coach. Mike Loxley's got a great reputation as an offensive coach, and I think we all thought he was going to do well offensively at Maryland. But 79 and 63 points in two weeks, the first two weeks of the season, obviously an explosive offense. Why is one offense more explosive than another? So there's two reasons that there's uh, dynamic offenses. Number one is it's players. You know, the coaches that think that they're going to come out smart everybody, but they don't have the players, they don't usually last very long. And Mike Loxley, I've had this conversation many, many times. He's actually on my staff in Florida for a, a really? couple months. Yeah, for a I couple months. That. And then he went to Illinois with Ron Zook. But we've had many conversations. He believes when you have an elite athlete, get him the ball. And that's the obligation of the coach. And this falls under category number one, why you have an explosive offense. You have Anthony McFarland, in my opinion, one of the most talented, unheard of players in America. I think by the time his career is over, he'll be, I mean, he hurt us bad last year when I was at Ohio State. I remember. He's fast, he's dynamic. To see him come out of the backfield, catch the ball, this is nothing more than an isolation route. The quarterback has a simple read, and I don't know exactly what it was, but I imagine it was, hey, throw the ball to McFarland. The bottom line is, Get him the ball as many times as you can in space. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. The injustice is when you don't give him the ball. You said it was the coach's responsibility to make sure that a guy like McFarland catches the ball or gets the ball. Tell me how you do that. Well, that's that was what I've done over the years. I have my game plan sheet with me, and in the corner I would always have uh, a tag list. And so, for example, at Ohio State, I had Curtis Samuel, I had Paris Campbell, I had K.J. Hill, you know, Zeke Elliott. And you better make sure he touches the ball. Mike Thomas, you better make sure he touches the ball. And there would be the time throughout the course of the game, I would simply just every time he did, I'd make a little mark by it. When I was at Florida, Percy Harvin had to touch the ball 10 times a game. Paris Campbell had to touch the ball 10 times a game, and I would relate to the play caller, Ryan Day at the time or whomever it was, saying, hey, listen, get the ball to Percy, get the ball to Paris Campbell. And that was a jet sweep, that was a little bubble, whatever. And uh, here's once again just an let, example. Let, let, me, let me ask you this before you do that. Did the players know that you did that? Oh, sure. So yeah. it's part of what you, you tell them. Yeah, and, and that was a, almost like a rite of passage. You know, the, the young player, when am I going to get on Coach Myers' list to really? be able to get the ball? And how do you earn that right? You earn the right by becoming a great player, great worker, and you deserve the right to go do that. So, so that's, the, that's the biggest reason. Number one is players. What's number two? Reason number two for explosive offenses are a scheme that's hard to defend. Okay. And here the defense, you can say, did everything they're supposed to do, and they still give up a big play. So here it is. This is the triple RPO, which we've talked about. Right. The quarterback actually has three choices. Number one, he's reading the defensive end. If he stays out there, he's going to give the ball a tailback. That's option number right. one. Number two would be if the defensive end closes, now the quarterback's going to run and keep it. Okay, if the walkout defender, you can see, kind of shuffles out there. Right. Go if he the comes top. to him, then he's going to, this is a very well-executed triple option RPO. And then the Maryland does an excellent job blocking on the perimeter. And this is a well-executed play on offense and defense, and offense gets about a 25-yard play. Impressive that Mike Loxley and his offensive staff could execute this play this well, just taking it over and this being their second game. And much different when they, and they were a good, line. you know, the thing that, here's what's wrong with Maryland over the years, in my opinion. They would come out and there'd be a game or two like against us. They look like they could beat anybody in America. They come out the next week and right. they'd lose to someone that they're actually better than. My, I, I'm anxious to see if Mike Loxley can have the consistency that Maryland, in my opinion, deserves. Here's one more very well thought out scheme to play. And this is excellent. This is into a three deep zone coverage. It's a three level pass. And you're simply gonna read that flat defender who gets sucked up on the play action by the fullback coming across. And this is a very well thought out scheme. Nice execution by the quarterback. Just freeze it when they're all at three levels. Like, how do you teach the spacing? What, okay, okay, and the first time we'll go through the quarterback's read. Okay. It's deep defender, the flat defender. Progression is deep, middle, short. His eyes go deep, he can see the corner bailing, middle, he has a nice window to throw the ball, and that's where he delivers the ball. All right, talent first, scheme second. And the coach's responsibility gets the, the ball players the ball.